Hey guys, in this video we are going to be splitting up the frequency bands so that we can process them all independently. So what I mean by that is we can split the high frequency content, the mid and the low end frequency content of a particular sample or a MIDI channel or whatever. We can split it into those three different parts and we can say put a reverb on the high, we can saturate the mid and we could compress the low. Let's just say that that's what we wanted to do. And we can do that all independently. And there's a couple of ways of achieving it, but today we're going to be looking at one way of doing it. And that's the, so far, apparently the most invisible way of doing it. So sometimes when you split up the frequency spectrum, you can introduce phasing problems into that particular sample or whatever it is you're processing. So we're going to try and do it um, the cleanest way, so to speak. So to start things off, uh, we're going to come to instruments, uh, sorry, audio effects, and we're going to go audio effect rack, and we're going to drop it down on this audio channel, and I'll just delete those other channels. We don't need them. I'm going to delete the reverb and the delay. I like looking at a clean, naked Ableton. Um, all right, so we've got the audio effect rack. It's dropped in here. What can we see? We can see this knob here. Turns on and off the macro knob so that we can see them. Obviously, this turns the rack on or turns it off. This shows us the effects that have been dropped into it. So far, there's nothing dropped in. And this shows us the chains. So the chain is essentially one version of whatever sample we've got passing through it. So let's get a sample. Let's get one of these ridiculous samples. Yo! All right, so that's one sample and we've got one chain of it. So I can go another chain and another chain. So basically what that's doing is it's duplicating it. So we've got one version of that audio running through chain one. We've got another version of it running through chain three, uh, sorry, two, and then again, chain three. They're all getting added together. Then they're coming over here to the mixer. Then they're coming to the master. So basically what happens when you're putting the same audio signal on top of itself it just increases in volume so now all of this is going to be really loud um we just won't play it right now um so yeah let's go ahead and call this first chain high this one mid and this one low so i'm just going control r on my keyboard to do that i'm going to right click and i'm going to color the highs green the mids blue and the lows red Boom, boom, boom. Okay, and then I can come over to my Max for Live devices and I can come into, um, is it audio effect? Yes. I can come in here and I can grab this Max for Live device called Invisible Band, Band Splitter. And obviously, I'm going to have a link to the Max for Live device, but I'm also going to upload my version of this rack so that you can just download and use it. Personally, I think it's much more useful if you followed me along and actually made it for yourself, but I still get people asking me to upload it, so I'm going to do that. But I just want to be like old grumpy man for a second and say, and this is, you know, I try not to be negative on this channel, but I'm just going to be stern, so to speak. Um, if you're not willing to make it yourself, then you're just being a bit lazy. So Invisible Band Splitter, going to put it on the lows. Let's go ahead and have a look at what it looks like. All right, so we've got this low frequency crossover point. Okay, so this is where um, you can set what you consider to be low frequency content. So anything from zero hertz up to 250 hertz, let's say. But we could change that. So we can make 150 hertz. And then if we turn off the mid and we turn off the high, and then we solo this low channel, the channel that we've got that device on, let's have a listen. So if I pull that down lower, right? So that's dictating dictating what is low. So we can set that to 150. So we can fit, set that to 150 and that's um, what we're gonna say is low frequency content. We can copy that, we can go to mids, we can paste it onto mid, we can turn off the low, we can turn on the mid, we can copy, go to high, right click paste and we can turn off the high and turn on, uh, turn on the high turn off the mid right so now if i unsolo that we're back to the original sample 
all together. And then if I solo the high, got the highs. Solo the mid, got the mids. Solo the lows, got the lows, okay? Fantastic. So we are going to take this one step further. Now we've split everything. The next thing that we want to do is we want to actually do something a little sophisticated. We are going to set up some macros. So highs. We can right click on this high frequency knob and we can map it to macro one. We can come to the mids and we can right click and do the same. We can come to the lows, right click and do the same. Okay, so now this control, the high frequency control, is in control of all of these. So we can change the high frequency crossover point just with this knob on all of them. So we wouldn't have to go in and independently do it if we wanted to. We can right click, set that to default and it puts it at its default value, which is 2.5 kilohertz. We can right click this and color it green. That's the high frequency, high freak crossover. Fantastic. Next, we are going to um, do the low frequencies and, and we'll right click and we'll set that one to macro five. We'll go in here, right click, set to macro five, go in here, right click, set to macro five. Um, right click default, right click. Um, what are we coloring the lows? We're coloring it red. So now this bad boy changes the low frequency crossover point. Okay. That is brilliant. Um, and then we are going to go in here. We're going to go into here. We're going to grab a utility and we're going to chuck it on the high frequencies. We're going to right click the gain. We're going to set it to macro um, two. We're going to right click this, set it to default. So zero decibels, we're going to right click and we're going to change the name, rename. And we're going to call this high volume. Okay, so that's the high frequency volume. Right click, make it green. Go to the mids, get a utility, chuck it on. Guess what? We're going to right click, macro three. Click on here, name that mid volume. We're going to right click that. We're going to make it blue. We're going to set that to the default value. And then finally, we're going to go utility and we're going to go on there. We're going to right click, macro four. Click on here, low volume. Right click set to default. Okay, it's all good. Let's take it even further. Right click, map to macro 8, low pan. Okay, right click, set to default. Mid, right click, macro 7, mid pan. Uh, low, didn't get colored. Let's do it. Low and low, mid, and that's going to be high. So mid pan, right click, set to default. Finally, this guy, last macro knob. Um, high pan set to default. Okay, we're almost finished with the device. We have to do one more thing. You'll notice that the utility device goes all the way to plus 35 decibels. That is going to make our ears bleed. We are going to cry. So right click that, edit macro map. See here the maximum value that that can be. We don't want it to be 35 uh, decibels. It's ridiculous. Let's make it six. Okay, so I type six in there, type six in there. Type six in there, right click, edit macro map to drop it away. Now, right click, set to default, right click, set to default, right click, set to default. The maximum is now six decibels above that volume. Okay, we've got everything mapped. We're doing good. Why did I map the pans? So that you can do stuff like this. So high pan, turn the mapping on, drop that down. Center, go ridiculous with this thing. I'm just, yeah, whatever that'll do. Go mid pan, open up its own lane. You there, 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 uh, there. Okay, what does that do? Creates more interesting sounds because let's listen. <laughs> cool, we keep the low in the middle. Let's go, it's holding the bass weight, everything else is moving. Okay. Why have we split the frequencies? Because we want to process things independently. The mid-range, let's saturate it. Grab saturator, drop it on the mid-range. We're going to go for the hard curve. We'll pull it down a few decibels. 
Hi, let's overdrive the highs. Uh, where's the overdrive? Where's the OD? Yo, overdrive. Right there. Drop it on there. Cool, it adds a bit more presence there. Lows. Hmm. Let's uh let's leave the lows. But then okay, we've we've done the separate processing. Now we want to squish everything together, so let's just do glue compressor. You don't need I mean this doesn't need compressed, but it's just so you uh, get an idea of what I'm getting at. Process things independently, and then you can process them all together and you kind of squish it all back together. So we don't need it's already coming through there pretty hot, so we don't need too much um, on the threshold. So we can make up the gain that's getting lost if we needed to. We're clipping this a bit. We could probably do a bit of gain staging in here. Potentially would be a good idea to go negative six, negative six, negative six. Still clipping. Uh, pull the sample down in volume, but whatever. Um, So that is how I'd split the frequencies, how I'd make a sweet rack. The last thing I want to show you is frequency band splitter. Okay. What you can do is you can go to Ableton devices. You can make a folder where you just call it Ableton devices. You just grab that guy. You drop it in there. You go enter. Boom. Now it's in there. If I delete it, I want it back. Click, drag. Boom. Hope you guys learned heaps. Oh. By the way, don't save that with the overdrive in it or the saturator um, because you just want it clean and you want all of this set to default. Um, so, for yeah, set it back to like zero values, okay? Um, and then save it because that way it's neutral when you pull it in. Cool. Hope you guys enjoyed heaps. Uh, I'll see you in another video.